Welcome to Art History with Jackie. In celebration of Remembrance Day, we will be talking about some art installations that have been created in honor of our fallen heroes. The installation, Blood Sweat Lands and Seas of Red, was a multitude of ceramic poppies cascading over the walls of the Tower of London. It is estimated that over 4 million people saw it during its run. Surrounding the Tower of London were 888,246 handmade poppies, each representing a British and Commonwealth person who died during World War I. The first poppy was planted on August 5th, the first day of Britain's full participation in the war, and the last, last poppy was painted, planted on Armistice Day, November 11th. The installation covers 16 acres, which is roughly equivalent to 250 tennis courts or 16 soccer fields. The clay models were handmade under artist Paul Cummins, and the setting was designed by Tom Piper. Teams of volunteers worked day and night to carefully assemble each flower. It took 300 volunteers a year to make the flowers. 90 tons of steel were used to create the stems of the poppies, which varied in length from 1 meter to 50 centimeters. And the structures which made the red flowers look like they were floating over the moat or pouring out of one of the tower's windows. Prime Minister of the UK at the time, David Cameron, told The Guardian that it was a stunning display and it is extremely poignant. He went on to add, it was a reminder of how many people gave their lives, not just in that conflict, although obviously the slaughter was horrendous, but also in so many conflicts since then, when our armed forces personnel have been defending our freedoms and our way of life. Of the flowers, Cummins has said, ceramics are transient and fragile like we are. They feel part of our humanity. Societies have always been carbon dated by their ceramics and pottery. I considered making roses, which symbolize sacrifice in Victorian times, but I settled on the poppy because of its link to war and remembrance. The poppy has a long association with Remembrance Day. Scarlet corn poppies grow naturally in conditions of disturbed earth throughout Western Europe. The destruction brought by Napoleonic Wars of the 19th century transformed bare land into fields of blood-red poppies growing around the bodies of the fallen soldiers. In 1914, the fields of northern France and Flanders were once again ripped open as World War I raged through Europe. Once the conflict was over, the poppy was one of the only plants to grow on the otherwise barren battlefields. The significance of the poppy as a lasting memorial symbol to the fallen was realized by the Canadian surgeon John McRae in his poem, In Flanders Fields. The poppy has come to represent the immeasurable sacrifice made by his comrades and quickly became a lasting memorial to those who died in World War I and later conflicts. Upon reading In Flanders Field, a woman named Moina Michael, a university professor, vowed to always wear a red poppy. She found an initial batch of fabric blooms for herself and her colleagues at a department store. After the war ended, she returned to the university town of Athens and came up with the idea of making and selling red silk poppies to raise money to support returning veterans. Michael's campaign to create a national symbol for remembrance, a poppy in the colors of the Allied nation's flags entwined around a victory torch, didn't get very far at first. But in the mid-1920s, she managed to get Georgia's branch of the American Legion to adopt the poppy, minus the torch, as its symbol. On the opposite side of the Atlantic, a French woman named Anna Guerin had championed the symbolic power of the red poppy from the beginning. In France, Guerin organized French women, children, and veterans to make and sell artificial poppies as a way to fund the restoration of war-torn France. Guerin may have been the single most significant figure in spreading the symbol of the remembrance poppy through the British Commonwealth countries and other allied nations. We at the Art Station would like to thank all of those who put their lives at risk for our country. Thank you and see you next week.